Hey guys, so today's the day I'm going to cringe at all my UC essays I haven't looked at since November. No one likes writing essays, but we're here to get into college, so let's get right to it. I honestly put a good amount of time and effort into my essays, although I did one personal insight question three days before it was due, which I do not recommend. Since college app deadlines are coming soon for all you juniors, I thought that this video would be really helpful so you guys get an idea of the structure behind a college essay. Personal insight questions are a bit different from the common app personal essay because they tend to be shorter and focus on a variety of topics rather than one specific field. These UC essays are more straight to the point rather than a detailed storyline. So the UCs I applied to are UC Santa Barbara, UCLA, UC Berkeley, UC Irvine, UC San Diego, and that's, I think that's it. Side note, I got accepted into all except UCLA. Hello darkness, my old friend. Before actually writing your essay, I cannot stress this enough, but please, please, please brainstorm. My AP Lit teacher actually gave us an assignment where we had to write about as many ideas as we can think of, and that really helped me narrow down the topic I wanted to choose for my essay. List all of your extracurricular activities, your leadership positions, um, your background, and significant moments in your life. Once you have them all right in front of you, I guarantee you, you'll find one for your essay. My school actually offers an essay counseling service, which really helped me organize my thoughts and the structure of my essay. It was also completely free, which I'm very grateful for. And shout out to Scott for helping me out. UC essays are a way to show the university what you've done, what sets you apart, and your values. You should write about experiences that showcase what you've learned and how your experiences shaped your views on the world. A great structure to use for these essays is to talk about what you did, the problems you solved, the lessons learned, and the impact that you had. Overall, just try to link your passions back to yourself and what you did to pursue it. I know that some schools lack the resources my school offered, and if that's the case for you, I recommend amazing online resources such as the YouTubers The Cath Path and Super Tutor TV, and also College Essay Guy. I think it's best to be authentic in your college essays, and that being said, even if you were to copy my essays word by word, there's no guarantee that you would be accepted. The college admissions process is incredibly random and depends on so many factors that you just can and cannot control. So the first essay we're going to start with is the significant challenge essay. And here's the prompt. Describe the most significant challenge you have faced and the steps you have taken to overcome this challenge. How has this challenge affected your academic achievement? And it's 350 words. In this essay, I wrote about my younger brother who's diagnosed with nonverbal autism. I talked about the challenges I faced as a sibling of someone on the spectrum and the level of growth, respect, and maturity I gained through growing up with my brother. In the end, I connected my growth to how I was inspired to take on new challenges through my law internship and my advocacy. I want to clarify that I kind of added my own twist to the prompt of this essay. My brother didn't impact my academic achievement in a negative way, as the prompt might presume, but he actually inspired my future academic interests. From my room, I heard my brother's agonizing screams. Soon after, he bolted in and burst into tears. What happened? I asked offering him a letter board. By pointing to letters, he replied, Communication is difficult. They don't understand me. Why try? My brother, Sina, communicated with me two years ago. He was 11. He was diagnosed with nonverbal autism at age two. When we were younger, I was embarrassed by his unpredictable tantrums and perpetually anxious about what others thought. My parents were busy caring for Sina and taking him to therapy and the hospital, so I also felt neglected and infuriated. 
I was uncomfortable inviting friends because I hated having to explain Sina's behaviors. Don't get me wrong, I loved my brother, even if I acted like I was ashamed of him. I was a typical, insecure kid. Besides, I wasn't sure if he recognized who I was. I could not have been more wrong. At 11, Sina began typing. He could finally release the trapped voice inside of his head. What he had to say changed my life. I realized he was capable of expressing his thoughts and feelings. We quickly developed a deeper understanding and appreciation of each other, which continues to grow every day. Now, I never hesitate to invite my friends over. I'm proud of my little brother. Sina's intelligence astounds me, and his quirky sense of humor is hysterical. He is the complete opposite of the uninformed stereotype that people with autism cannot feel or understand emotions. In reality, they process and communicate differently. Sina sparked my desire to advocate on behalf of those with autism. Currently, I am interning at NAV Law, a disability law firm. Inspired by Sina's desire to learn and be included in school, I sought to make sure that he and others with disabilities receive the appropriate education and accommodation to succeed. Bridging our communication gap enabled us to bond as siblings and taught me to appreciate people for who they are internally. All these years, I thought I was seen as teacher, but I now realize that he was mine. The next essay is the community essay, and here's the prompt. What have you done to make your school or your community a better place? In this essay, I focused on my role in a nonprofit organization and connected it to my advocacy for people on the spectrum. Approximately 1 in 68 children is diagnosed with autism. This growing condition leads to worried parents, common misconceptions, and above all, increased isolation and helplessness among diagnosed individuals. Difficulties with concentration, completing basic tasks, and mental health problems are challenges some face daily. After my life-changing experience of being able to communicate with my brother, I've become a dedicated advocate for those with autism and their families, focused mainly on increasing inclusivity and resources in the community. Since freshman year, I volunteered at the LA branch of Autism Society of America, the largest grassroots organization in the country focused on autism. I help organize events and speaker bureaus celebrating the accomplishments of autistic individuals and educate the public on how to interact with and support those affected by autism. For greater impact, I was the community outreach director of The Behave a nonprofit organization that counsels families and provides resources on understanding and supporting autistic children. Our mission is to provide an inclusive environment that promotes learning, fun, and equality. It started with managing social media, initiating community outreach, and developing a business plan. At Santa Monica College, I took an intro to business course to help me better understand the administrative side of things. I helped design a website, organized events, developed branded merchandise, and began fundraising efforts. Later, we started after-school programs to promote learning and skill development, and organized community drum and dance classes. People with autism often develop mental health issues because of being isolated and mistreated. Being labeled as different pressurizes them to withdraw but through the arts, they can express themselves freely and comfortably. In collaboration with my brother's behaviorist, we train recruits to consult with families who are in dire need of assistance. When we were contacted by a mother in Afghanistan with an autistic child, our global reach warmed my heart. Finally, by hosting events in low-income communities throughout Los Angeles, we offer resources to families that need it most. Going forward, I aspire to continue fighting for the special needs community and extend my impact by studying human rights law and expanding my nonprofit activities in college. 
In this essay, I started by describing the problem I was trying to solve. After that, I clearly stated the impact I had through my volunteer work and my role in the organization. In the end, I connected it to how it inspired my future career path. Showing action and impact is essential for a successful UC essay, and especially if you're talking about what you contributed to the community. The next prompt is, every person has a creative side, and it can be expressed in many ways, problem solving, original and innovative thinking, and artistically, to name a few. Describe how you express your creative side. In this essay, I focused on my extensive involvement in my school's arts program. I stare past the shadows and catch a glimpse of the stranger seated before me. The music plays and the lights bring the stage to life. Beneath the nervous anticipation, I discerned an even more powerful emotion. The reason why I continue with theater today. Excitement. Being an ensemble character meant there were no limits to my imaginary personas. I utilized a lengthy analysis sheet to develop my character's complex personality, comedic aspirations, and intricate relationships. Each character felt like a component of my subconscious, with each performance manifesting a captivating reality. Embodying each character challenged me to assume and express a personality within every intention, thought, and action. Instead of being generic nun number two in the musical Sister Act, I was Mary Monsieur, a French harpist obsessed with cats and distrustful of the Mother Superior. Each production provides not only the opportunity to perform, but also experiment with various aspects of human nature within each character. Backstage, I grab an angled brush to contour the actor's cheekbones. Theatrical makeup is inseparable from the performance itself. It creates characters, heightens features, and compensates for the effects of stage lighting. It enhances how the audience experiences the performance. And then, there is the choreography, orchestrating the rhythm of movement and envisioning arrangements of elongation, rotation, and placement. In my dreams, I repeat turn sequences, visualize facial expressions, and examine musical dynamics. When words are insufficient to convey ideas, movement takes its place. I choreograph to tell a story. The student-led production, The Special, portrayed a variety show in the 70s. I incorporated groovy music with line dancing and the hustle to bring the time period to life. In my contemporary solo, I interweave harsh sequences with controlled extensions and fluid transitions to convey a progression from restriction to emotional freedom. With their distinctive qualities, each style of dance allows me to express the full range of my emotions non-verbally. Acting enables me to embrace people's differences. Makeup teaches me to pay attention to detail. Choreography allows me to experiment and take risks. Art in every form allows me to trust my instincts. As you can tell, this essay is more visual and creative than the previous ones. And even though I was in a lead in my school musicals, I still showed creativity by explaining the passion and commitment I put into character development. With the creativity essay, think of introducing the reader to how your mind works. Try to express your inner thoughts and passion towards the activity by using specific concrete details. As you can see, the details I used was the process I went through to create my character, doing actors' makeup backstage, and the process of creating choreography. My last essay answers the prompt, what would you say is your greatest talent or skill? How have you developed and demonstrated that talent over time? In this essay, I focused on my commitment and growth in dance. Dance is a very important part of my life and consumes most of my time, so I thought it was a perfect fit for this prompt. Open chest, pointed feet, hips down, yelled my ballet teacher. My first dance class was a nightmare. I was a clumsy 10-year-old wobbling across the floor, struggling to land a single pirouette. 
seven years later, I was perfecting my quadruple turn. At first, I was not mentally prepared to take dance classes, thinking it was too late and embarrassing to start at 10. With a strong urge to finally pursue my passion, I decided to enroll in a summer program which introduced me to several forms of dance. Dancing seven hours a day, I realized the dedication and discipline required to excel at this art form and desired to explore it further. I started attending classes for 10 to 15 hours a week, examining foundations of ballet, jazz, hip hop, and tap. The studio served as my escape from reality, a place to express my individuality through movement and expel stress by focusing on the present. After only two years, I auditioned for my studio's competitive team. I failed to make it, but I was inspired to return the following year, when I not only qualified for the team, but also was selected as captain. My partner and I took first place in the state for our contemporary duet, as did my group in jazz. I helped my teammates learn routines, organize events, and motivated my team before performances. Being a role model for others was daunting at first, but it taught me to communicate effectively, handle stressful situations, and solve problems gracefully. As I developed a stronger bond with other dancers, I realized that it was not a rivalry to be the best dancer. It was an opportunity to grow and be inspired by others through the process. This year, I aim to continue expanding my boundaries by competing as a soloist and training with my school's varsity dance team. I've also been hired starting this winter as an assistant dance instructor at my studio. Dance will always be a part of my life. Whether it's performing, leading, teaching, or creating, I will never cease to evolve as an artist. Honestly, in any college essay, it's okay to talk about failure if you at least demonstrate how you recovered from that failure and what you made out of it. Like for example, I didn't make the team the first year, but I kept trying. And colleges want to see your dedication and your proactive mindset towards your goals. And that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please comment down any questions or direct message me on Instagram and I'll be more than happy to respond. See you soon in my next video.